We found one. <laughs> We've got a leopard hunting something. Well done, Mr. Senza. That does luck, eh? <laughs> Senza's going, leopard, leopard. I'm thinking he's talking about what color underwear he's got on. Meanwhile, he's, <laughs> he's shouting out about leopard. <laughs> That was a good find. Wow. Well done. He definitely was hunting something. I wonder if she, something didn't come down to drink. I didn't see anything when we drove in here. Now, I'm not very good at identifying these cats, so if any of you knows what leopard this is, please feel free to tell me. Give me a couple of minutes and I'm sure I'll fathom it out. But uh, if any of you are quick on the trigger, you're welcome to let me know. Why are you being so skittish? Boy, what's the story with you? Let's see who this is. Senzo says he thinks it's Hosanna. It is a Hosanna. Why are you being so skittish, boy? What's the story? Oh, he is getting big, hey? Hello there, my boy. So, thank you very much for helping us confirm what leopard this is. This is Hosanna, and he is a leopard cub, well, sub-adult leopard cub, so to say. A beautiful shot of him drinking there, slaking his thirst. Good afternoon, my man. There we go. Now leopard will, they don't need to drink, but they will drink when they can. And he feels a bit, I think he feels a bit intimidated drinking here. I think they are in an exposed place. And you might find that he's having a bit of a wrestle with another leopard, potentially Tumba, maybe another male leopard in this area. Potentially there's some lions in this area. It's quite difficult to say what was making him so timid. Of course, these young leopards do, from time to time, do get a little bit timid. This is one of their things. Now, Francis, you say you, you, this seems like it's his favorite spot, as we see him at Twin Dams quite often. Francis, yeah, I have to agree with you there. He, um, he does seem to like this spot. Leopard are if nothing else, uh, creatures of habit. And, um, and him being a cub at this point will hang around here for a couple of months while he explores. This is where his mom brought him when he was very young. I don't know if you remember when they were just born, his mom used to hide him in a road culvert close to here. So this would be the core of her territory, a place where he is intimately familiar with he knows where the big trees are, he knows where to get water, he knows where the impala are. And, uh, and until he's comfortable and confident, he's not going to easily move out of this area. It's beautiful. And so we will, for the next couple of months, probably find him. He'll be in and around this area. This area you can move through pretty quickly. And so he'll be in and around here. He looks like he's got a fairly full tummy as well. H. Macy, you just made a comment that I think everybody will agree with. You're saying our little prince is growing up to be such a big boy. And uh, I think everyone will agree with you on that one. He's turning into a beautiful leopard, isn't he? Uh, it's interesting with him in that his father's are, are well, his father is a, a dominant male in this area that probably within the next two years or so will reach the end of his reign here. And he's, he doesn't stand a chance of being killed. He just stands a chance of being ousted by another young male. And I wonder if he's going to kick Hosanna out of this territory before he realizes he's losing his grip on it. You can hear the Egyptian geese 
warning everything that is here and they're swimming now towards him. He'll catch and kill them if he can. He won't risk it now, but he will if he can. Oh, he's having a long drink, eh? Very thirsty. Been a hot day. Didn't look like he had eaten anything big uh, last night. His belly wasn't full full. The other day when we shared it with him, he was hunting a lot. Francis in Israel, you just wanted to know why do wild, large wild cats like this not have slitted pupils like a, like a house cat would? That's a good question. Um, I don't actually know the answer to that question, to be honest. I mean, I can help, I can try and reason it out. I mean, I don't know if this is going to be right or not, but no, I don't actually know. I mean, it's got to do with the amount of light that goes into their eye, but of course, they can limit that with a very small pupil. And a slitted eye opening up wide is the same as a round eye opening up wide. It's like today's a question. Today's a day where I'm asking you all more questions than what you're asking me. Let's see if there's any literature out there in the broader world on why large cats have round pupils and not slitted pupils or if nothing else, what is the advantage of a slitted pupil over a round pupil? Let's see what everyone says. <laughs> He's got his mother's face, that's for sure. Now, I am just going to, if you'd excuse me for a couple of seconds, I'm just going to call in Andrew. He uh, He's looking for a leopard this afternoon, and I did say that I'd help. We were just lucky enough to find, and I don't want to disappoint him. So excuse me while I'm on the game drive radio. Uh, Andrew, come in for Steph. The sun's now coming out on him. He's looking beautiful, isn't he? Uh, Andrew, Andrew, Steph. No answer just yet, so we'll give him a few minutes. He's probably talking to his guests. What are you going to do now, boy? I'm going to go back to hiding somewhere. See, he's again just sneaking up. I wonder if he's not worried about these geese giving his, uh, his position away. Typically leopard, using the lowest point possible to access. There he goes and sneaks again. <laughs> no, he is a bit more confident. So I'm going to change position. you've helped us with the answer to the question about the slitted pupil thank you you say that a slitted pupil helps with vertical focus which is specifically good when hunting for birds up in the sky and also for prey that's much smaller than them that's very interesting so thank you very much for that KR. that's uh, that's nice of you to do that so wow that is interesting and of course because leopard hunt fairly large prey on the ground mostly they don't need it as do lion Let's see if we can get you a nice shot of him with the sun on the side of his face for you. And you can keep this one for the record books. Uh, Andrew, Andrew Steph. Andrew, please make your way to Twin Dams. I have a young male leopard on the dam wall. Uh, stations, two vehicles in this position, myself and Andrew. And Andrew, when you get here, if you wouldn't mind taking over. Uh, 
Uh, you're welcome, Orbs. You'll be the third station in this particular position. Um, this animal slowly may be making his way just off to the side of the dam. Or Sorry, everybody. I just needed to do a bit of admin. And uh, it's necessary, Archer. You know, everybody helps everybody here. And today we were lucky enough to find him and uh, and uh, and basically um, they'll help us again when they need to. Uh, you're welcome to, if you wouldn't mind just with your name. Excuse me, it's been a long time since I've been on the radio. Copy that. You're welcome to, Shaul. Thank you very much. So, on a day like today where you have uh, relatively few animals moving around, a leopard would draw a lot of attention from everybody around here. And... Uh, and there is no doubt that he is going to uh, he is going to draw some attention from our colleagues here today. Ah, Chatla, you wanted to know what colour the leopard's eyes are. They're like a greeny colour, a greeny blue colour. He's sitting close close enough now that we can see. Oh, come on, look at us. There you go. That is beautiful, and you'll see they're like a greeny, yellowy, topazy color. They're the most beautiful colors, I must be honest with you. Oh, that's lovely, hey? Look at that, lovely. Screenshot, everybody. Any whiskers? Oh, that is lovely. All those ears giving away his mood. And he puts his ears back, puts his ears forward. Long tail stretched out behind him, just sitting on his bum. Now, Richard, you'd like to know how fast he can run. Um, at short bursts, he can do up to 80 kilometers per hour. Um, and just a little bit faster than that, even up to 88 kilometers an hour. What that is in miles per hour, I'm not too sure, but he can absolutely uh, do d sprint at that speed for very fast or very short spaces of time. Gee whiz, hold on guys, I just need to sort out this radio. It's going crazy in my ear. Excuse me, everybody. I'm I'm so out of practice with uh, with um, these radios that when somebody's speaking in my ear while I'm trying to make and finish a sentence, I feel like my sentences goes into uh, awry. <laughs> so excuse me if my words are coming out all garbled. <laughs> it's been a never-ending stream of chatter on the radio. Uh, Aubrey, Steph, if you wouldn't mind taking over this particular position, please. Uh, you have Andrew on approach and Shaul on standby. There we go. I've handed over the responsibility of talking to Andrew, I mean to Aubrey, and that means that I can carry on my conversation with you without, uh, without worry of being my brain being hijacked by, by radio communications. <laughs> Look at his tail, the tip of his tail. Now, that white that you see there, that's what a cub would see. And following mom and using small little movements like that, you, he will be communicated to by his mom. It's called a following mechanism. Most animals have it. And he would have had his mother signaling to him from a young age, just like that, in his face and they're very sensitive to mood changes. The tip of his tail is very sensitive to mood changes. Just look at that fantastic coat color that he has from the back. Along the spine and across the hip region has to be one of my favorite areas. 
Laurie, you'd like to know if a leopard's tail is longer than his body. That's actually a good question, Laurie. So give me one second. I'm going to tell you the exact answer to that. I almost think it is, but there's a, there's a ratio of how much longer it is. So I'm going to just go through my book here. But it, it, it definitely... 282. Let me just see if I can answer you that question for you. Um... Uh, it doesn't say. I feel like I've read it somewhere before, to be honest with you. Tail 60 to 110 centimeters. Oh no, that's tall. Okay, so it's not in my one book that I have. I almost feel that it is longer him than, than, than him. So let's just say that it is for now until I can go through my books here and find out where I've had that reference to uh, to um, to exactly how much longer it is. What are you doing, boy? He's now walking through the sticks. It's almost like he wants to stay hidden. This is asked the question of questions. Do you leopard, um, are leopards more comfortable on the ground or up in trees? That is a question, Melissa, that I, I've tried to answer for years myself. I don't actually know. They, they walk around a lot, and I think they walk around because they have to. They've got to get from one place to another. They've got to, um, they've got to hunt. They've got to mark their territory. I wonder what he's trying to hunt there. Look, his ears are flat. Oh, he's gonna go and lie down. Good for you. At least he's not walking across the boundary. Um, but given the chance, leopard will climb trees, and when they're younger, which is where I think you can find out what gives a leopard joy or not. In other words, does he like it or doesn't he? When they're young, leopard will bound from tree to tree and spend a lot of time in trees themselves. And it's there that I wonder that uh, that that these cats don't have a a joy for it. It's difficult to say actually because you know who knows. But I'm just gonna go forward a little bit more. I don't want to him and him 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 no, that's a touch. I don't want to get too close basically on a skinny damn wall is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> the English escapes me. Oh, he's a good looking boy. Jamie is busy looking for cats rather than having found some at this point. Why don't you go over to her quickly for an update?